What is going on everyone, Phil here for KO Gaming, and welcome to another edition of the Hateful Truth Review Series, where I give you maximum truth and minimum bullshit regarding the latest video game releases. And I've got a question. What is up with game developers reviving long dead franchises? I mean, just recently, some of the games that I've reviewed were games that have pretty much have been unheard of for some five or more years. And the subject of today's review is no different in Mirror's Edge Catalyst, but let's talk a little bit of history before we get started. Way back when, in late 2008, Mirror's Edge was released. A unique combination of first-person parkour platforming, as well as a little bit of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and a unique artistic style, this game received kind of a mixed reaction from audiences. Some really enjoyed the things that it did uniquely, but others strongly criticized the short length of the game, as well as the abundance of game bugs and physics clipping issues that ran rampant within it. So, the game kind of was just out and released and had some people who liked it, some people who didn't, and over the years it kind of got a cold following. But we never heard anything else from the franchise, and a lot of people were up in arms with EA saying, gee, what happened? Why don't you continue on an original game franchise like Mirror's Edge? Even though it wasn't necessarily the biggest sales hit, we'd like to see more of it. So fast forward to E3 2013, when EA actually did announce that DICE would be working on a semi-sequel, but really what it would be would be a franchise reboot in the form of Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Well, this week, Mirror's Edge Catalyst finally released after so long of a wait, almost eight years since its predecessor. Was it worth the wait? Well, let's talk about it. Although it is formally a reboot, the plot of Mirror's Edge Catalyst is very close to that of the original game. You play as an Asian female protagonist named Faith. You're sprung from jail early on in the game to find out that you are part of the City of Glass, this hyper-modern, futuristic city that is overrun by corporations and basically all the normal citizens are bogged down and controlled by this man called Kruger, who basically owns and controls everything. You quickly join a group of free runners, people who run throughout the city uh, off the grid, meaning they're not hooked in and connected by the same GPS tracking things as every other citizen in the city, and it's your job to try to basically sabotage all of the intentions of Kruger. You want to try to free the townspeople, you want to try to basically make it a more independent society free of this corporate clutch. Now, on its surface, the gameplay of Mirror's Edge Catalyst is very similar to that of Mirror's Edge. The vast majority of the time, you're going to be doing parkour throughout a city, you're also going to be following along colorful little trails that tell you how to get from point A to point B, similar to how things were colored in the original game, and yes, there's going to be some combat in there, although it's not the major focus of the game. And that's really where the similarities kind of end between the two games, because Catalyst attempts to try to take this franchise into the modern era by making the game completely free roam open world in the City of Glass. There's a lot of things that I think work well and a lot of things that don't, so let's get down to it. First off, the gameplay. There are two primary elements to the gameplay of Mirror's Edge Catalyst, the parkour free running and the physical hand-to-hand -hand combat. First, the free running. I'll be honest here, I actually felt that the free running parkour in Mirror's Edge Catalyst was actually improved off of the one that was back in the original Mirror's Edge. I mean, you've got a few other maneuvers here that weren't possible in the original game. Basically, you feel a lot more kind of adjusted to being able to take bigger falls with things like the recovery roll, and I did feel that it was kind of free form and fun in most cases. However, once you finally get into the meat of the game and you start getting to near the end where things are a lot more challenging and there's a lot more kind of risk of instant death if you fall, this is where the game's startling shortcomings start to take form. You'll notice that you'll want to jump to a ledge that's seemingly in front of you. Oops! The jump didn't seem to come out at the right time, or oops, you wanted to jump perfectly straight, but for whatever reason, Faith decided to go slightly right or slightly left, leading to a cheap instant death and a checkpoint load. Now, normally you might say, well, that's fine, because the checkpoints are great, right? Well, kind of. 
because some of the checkpoints in Mirror's Edge Catalyst are amazing. They literally will load you from where you jumped off the ledge and you could just try that jump again. But there were other times in the game when I was loaded entire rooms back you know, right before a few difficult jumps that I had just successfully done, and now I had to do them again and again. The checkpoints seem inconsistent. It really is kind of weird the way that they're set up in the game, sometimes being great and sometimes not being very good at all. So ultimately what ends up happening is the further you get into the game, the more frustrated you get with the parkour, especially when one missed jump can lead to an instant death, making you replay an entire segment of the game. It's kind of the same kind of deal that I had with the original Mirror's Edge. It's just not there yet. Even eight years later, this first person parkour is good. It's improved from the original, but it's not great enough to support an entire game, in my opinion. And ultimately, it's either going to end up being repetitive and boring or incredibly frustrating near the end of the game. There are two primary reasons why you'll want to use this parkour. Number one, to basically get from point A to point B and complete the story of the game. The story itself encompasses many different missions. There's actually 16 story missions total that cover entirely about maybe anywhere from 5 to 8 hours of gameplay depending on how good you are at the game. That's cool and you'll meet a wide variety of characters and it's all setting good. The story of the game isn't too bad until the end which we're actually going to talk about in a little bit. But then there's the other reason for parkour, the free roaming aspect of Mirror's Edge Catalyst, which is basically all of the side quests. And unfortunately, unlike the story of the game that will present you with kind of a variety of environments and things, this really doesn't fly so well in my opinion. Right from the get-go, you're going to notice that there's random NPCs just kind of standing about the city, and you're like, what's this about? Sometimes they just don't do anything when you walk up to them. Eventually, at certain parts of the story, they will unlock missions for them. Now, what kind of missions are there? Well, there's a race from point A to point B where you have to do it within a certain time period. There's a package which you have to take from point A to point B during a certain time period, which is actually identical to the race, so it doesn't make any sense that they even call it something different. There's also antennas that you can destroy. Once you do, usually some security forces show up and you have to fight them off. And then finally, there's billboards which you need to hack. Each time that you do, you'll actually get some experience points. So basically, the side content of the game allows you to get extra experience experience, which is all well and good, except that it's not needed, because during the course of the story of the game, per each story mission, you're earning around 500 to 750 experience points, which add up to about enough to get an upgrade in the skill tree for Faith. The bottom line is, when I played Mirror's Edge Catalyst, I did minimal side content. In fact, the only side content that I did were the no nodes. What these are are different towers within the City of Glass that once you unlock them, you will actually have fast travel enabled to some of your hideouts. So it behooves you to do them because then you can actually get from point A to point B really quickly without having to repetitively run back and forth across the city rooftops. So I did all of those, but outside of that, I never did any of the other side content of the game, and I coasted through it. You don't need all of the upgrades that Faith gets or that are available, and the bottom line is by the end of the game, I only was short by maybe three or four of them anyway. So the side content is completely oblivious to the game. You don't need to do it. It's literally there just to pad the game and say, oh, well, if you do everything, it's 40 hours of gameplay. Yeah, but when only five to eight hours of gameplay is meaningful because that's the story and you don't need to do the other 32 hours of gameplay and it doesn't give you anything significant, it's a complete waste of your time and it's meaningless, and that's one of my major gripes with Mirror's Edge Catalyst. My other gripe with the game is the other major component of it, the hand-to-hand -hand combat. A lot of people strongly criticized the original Mirror's Edge, saying that the combat was very weak, and that it behooved you to kind of avoid the combat rather than even go hand-to-hand -hand with anyone because you felt like such a weakling, and so that was one of the things that I think they sought to improve with this game and it didn't work. I actually think that it completely backfired in the opposite direction. The hand-to-hand -hand combat in Mirror's Edge Catalyst is incredibly simple. You have a light attack, which you can mash to do up to three hits, leading to a combo. After you fight a few weak enemies, you're going to realize most enemies you cannot use the weak attack against because they block it. Your second attack is a heavy kick. You can use this kick to either force an enemy backwards or kick them left or right into other enemies or into a wall or even over a railing for an instant kill. This is 
your bread and butter attack. Every single time you see an enemy in the game, you're either going to want to jump and press kick, or just do a running kick, or a standing kick, or a side kick. And you can mash it repeatedly, wash, rinse, and repeat. You can beat almost every enemy in the game just by mashing kick, and maybe dodging a little bit to the left and right. It's absolutely pathetic, and the hilarious part is watching the combat of this game, as the enemies literally, as you kick them, turn into wet noodles, the physics engine turns them into ragdolls that bounce off of each other, they hug each other lovingly, their faces will connect with other people's ball sacks. It just doesn't make any sense. If I just lightly kick you, do you completely become paralyzed and fall apart like a freaking ragdoll? Of course not. But that's what the combat is in 100% of Mirror's Edge Catalyst. It never improves. No matter how many abilities you unlock, no matter what you do, the combat becomes dodge, mash triangle, dodge, mash triangle, repeat, repeat, repeat. It's terrible. And that is horrible for a game where it seems like they were trying to evolve the engine. They went from completely bad combat to completely too easy, watered-down garbage combat. It's laughable. And if you don't believe me, the only thing I need to show you is this one combat scene from the end of the game. This is the most challenging combat in the game. Here we go. Hi. Oh, Classic. I need those doors open. Now. Why is it not working? Wow. Oh, look! This game is great. Look at this. They really had a lot of attention to detail, tons of polish. You can tell they definitely took their time with the game development and did a great job. Yeah, if that doesn't show you why you should completely write off the combat of this game, I don't know what else will. But it also highlights yet another major problem of the game, clipping and the graphically glitched physics engine. Yes, there are many times during the game when during combat, enemies would just kind of phase into walls, link into railings. It was gross, it was disgusting, and I can't believe that they did not improve this. It's just such a silly thing in 2016 to have a game where enemies are just like phasing through walls and shit. It just is not acceptable. But it's not just that. Many times during the game while I was doing platforming, this would happen. In fact, during one particular segment as I was falling, I in infinitely fell and could never touch the ground, therefore I couldn't progress with the game until I reloaded a checkpoint. But what makes this so ridiculously embarrassing for DICE is because the same exact physics bug was existing in the original Mirror's Edge as you can see right here. It's the same fucking bug. They never fixed it in eight years of game development. They couldn't fix it. They couldn't find this one bug in the code of the game and make it so that you don't infinitely fall in certain areas. It's a laughable joke. In addition to that bug, my game crashed several times during the course of my playthrough, forcing me to reload from a checkpoint. In one case, this was actually pretty advantageous, because the checkpoint was a great one. In another part, I had to completely replay several minutes of gameplay. So it's very frustrating. It's a buggy game. It's a mess of a game. The combat is terrible. There's a lot of negatives to be said here for a game that's supposed to be next-gen and modern. There's a lot of things here that just went totally awry. So now everyone, before I progress to the next part, spoiler alert, because I am never really do this in a review. I really almost never will reveal any kind of major spoilers about a game, but I'm so convinced that you should not play Mirror's Edge Catalyst because of its shortcomings. There's two critical things about the end of the game that really pissed me the fuck off that I need to share with you. So, spoiler alert, if you don't want to be spoiled on the game, stop watching the review right here. But at this point, with all the negatives I've already said, I'm pretty much pretty confident I've already convinced you to stay away. First off, the final boss of the game. I'm... I've never seen anything like this in my life. I'm just gonna let it speak for itself. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is in the flash. To me. Ooh, talk to me. <clears throat> yes, I'm sure she did this. Oh my god. Oh, this looks safe. Why are we doing what what the fuck? 
What was I supposed to do? <laughs> what the f This is probably like the final sequence. That's right. There's no final showdown against an antagonist. There's no final co combat cutscene. There's not even a final epic parkour segment. The end of Mirror's Edge Catalyst, you jump over a ledge and you are free falling to your death and you have no guidance whatsoever of what you're supposed to do to survive it and you will fall again and again and again until finally you flub around with the controller enough to figure out Oh, there's a pad down there that's invisible, you can't see it, and you're supposed to land on it. It literally took me about 15 tries to even see the pad, and then finally land on it. That's the final challenge. Once you complete it, guess what? The final cutscene loads. That's the end of the game. That is ridiculously underwhelming and unacceptable. But to make matters even worse, major spoiler number two and reason you should not play this game, I'm going to play word for word for you this one phrase from the final cutscene. You won't believe it. Here it is. I wish I could say everything changed. That the employees rose up in disgust over reflection and overthrew the conglomerate. But there was no mass uprising. Huh. No it changed nothing. No, nope, it changed absolutely nothing. Krugersek remained in control. Life went on as before. Or almost. Because something had changed. We'd started something. Something we intend to finish. And so the entire game was worthless because nothing changed and there's no a good ending at all. You basically wasted all of your time and money. Like literally in the ending, the game devs are telling you, well, you just wasted all your time and money playing this fucking piece of shit. No resolution. Everything's just as it was before you even put up, picked up your fucking controller. Wow. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. In all of your hours of gameplay that you put into Mirror's Edge Catalyst, nothing happens. Basically, everything at the end of the game is exactly as it was at the beginning. None of the things that you do in the game have any impact on anything. And if I've ever seen one, this is an insanely cheap attempt to create a franchise and say, Oh, well, nothing happened in the first game. Now you've got to tune into the second to actually see plot progression. So... Eight hours of story, no matter how many hours you spend free roaming and doing all the repetitive and nonsensical, unnecessary side missions in the game, nothing happens and the end of the game is exactly the same as the beginning. Wow, I've never played a game that made me feel so utterly fucking worthless, useless, and powerless. When I heard this, I slammed my fucking controller down on stream and said, God damn it, what the fuck kind of a piece of shit ending is this? There's no reason to ever play this fucking game. So let's recap the positives with the negatives. The positives of Mirror's Edge Catalyst. A nice, colorful, vibrant, open world. A lot of different environments that you'll go into over the course of the game that are very colorful and unique in their own right. And an improved parkour engine that I actually felt was better from that of the original game. And of course, a 5-8 to eight hour long story with some interesting characters and narrative in there that I actually thought was entertaining. And that's where the positives end for this game. Let's talk negatives. Number one, parkour that becomes wonky and imprecise near the end of the game. A checkpoint system that's not consistent. Sometimes it's really awesome and other times it's absolutely terrible leading to frustration. Open world gameplay a la side quests that are completely worthless because you don't need the extra experience they grant you to get any upgrades. You can get all the upgrades that you need to finish the game just by playing the story, making the additional 30 hours of gameplay completely fucking useless. A hand-to-hand -hand combat engine that is incredibly laughable, incredibly simple. You can mash buttons and win 95% of the time. And a physics engine for the combat that turns your enemies into wet puddles of physics mayhem that look absolutely hilarious and you cannot keep a straight face while you're actually doing this. Oh yeah, there's a ton of bugs and physics issues in the game, including game crashes and the like that make it incredibly frustrating. And then at the end of the game, the final boss is a joke and the ending is a fucking bait and switch piece of shit that says you have to buy the sequel to get any kind of plot progression. Bullshit. Ladies and gentlemen, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, an eight year wait 
for a piece of fucking dog shit. This game is not good. This game could have been good if it had the correct creative control. If I actually feel, honestly, that Mirror's Edge Catalyst would have been better if it were not open world. If they had made it linear like the original game, but they had just doubled the length of the original game, and they had modernized graphics and slightly better combat, it could have been absolutely amazing. Instead, they went the easy route. They said, let's look at all the other popular open world games. What do they have? Oh, repetitive side content, repetitive fetch quests and stupid race missions, and the same stuff you've seen in games like Far Cry and Infamous and these other games. They're all in Mirror's Edge Catalyst because they decided to do absolutely nothing creative or original. They played it safe. They said, let's do what everyone else has done. This game sucks because of it. I am so disappointed. An eight-year fucking wait for nothing all that time wasted. <sighs> so, all things considered, all factors weighed, I actually think the original Mirror's Edge is a better game than Mirror's Edge Catalyst simply because it knows what it is. It was trying to do something different, it failed on some levels and succeeded on others, it was too short, but at least when you were playing it you felt like you were doing something meaningful and creative. Mirror's Edge Catalyst is exactly the opposite. It plays it too safe, the story's pretty good, but ultimately the side content is completely worthless and by the time you beat the game, the game makes you feel like you wasted all of the time you invested in it with the shitty ending. Wow, fuck you, DICE, for doing such a shitty end to this game, seriously. I give Mirror's Edge Catalyst a 6 out of 10. It's certainly a functional game. It's not a huge, unplayable train wreck like Homefront the Revolution, which a lot of people keep asking me about. Do I think it's that bad? No. But at the same time, I certainly don't think that it's a game that you should bother playing. At the very least, maybe check out someone's playthrough and check out the story. This thing's not even worth a rental. It's a complete waste of your time. It's just sad. It's an eight-year wait for nothing. What a stinker. Well, that's it from my review, everyone, and I sure hope that you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please consider giving this video a like right here on YouTube, and also please check the video description where you'll find links to my raw gameplay footage of Mirror's Edge Catalyst over on my live streaming and raw gameplay channel, DSP Gaming. You'll also find a link to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil, as well as an Amazon Associates link. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. As usual, I'll see you later on the next episode of The Hateful Truth. Peace out.